In this episode of Mind Pump, we go in a different uh, direction um, from what we normally talk about and promote. In fact, this may come across as a counter message, but trust me, we make our case very well. And we think that this episode needs to come out, especially right now during these weird and uncertain times. So we talk about when eating junk food and being lazy and things under those categories are actually healthy, when they are things that you're doing because they are better for you at that moment, okay? But there's a fine line there, and we kind of break it down. So first we talk about what healthy actually means, how it's a sphere that encompasses many different things, not just the physical, but the mental, the spiritual, relationship health, and how all of those things uh, kind of overlap and communicate to each other, how if one thing is off, it tends to make the others off as well. We talk about uh, how to mitigate um, some of the negative effects of some of those things that I just talked about. We talked about the longest living people in the world and and the things that they do um, that make them really healthy that uh, you wouldn't normally think about. Um, uh, the mitigations uh, that we talked about, by the way, are great. So we give you a lot of great tips on how to, if you're going to eat junk food and if it's healthy for you at that moment, like things to do, and if you're going to drink alcohol, things you could do to kind of mitigate, mitigate the, the physical negative effects. If let's say you want to enjoy a glass of wine with your spouse. By the way, one of the things that we mentioned in there uh, is Z-Biotics. This is a, a genetically modified probiotic that you take right before you drink alcohol and the bacteria actually can create an enzyme that breaks down um, some of the negative byproducts of alcohol. We tested it ourselves uh, when we drank and uh, we felt way better the next day. So this is something you could do if you're enjoying a little bit more wine or whatever than you normally do, uh, take Z-Biotics with it. It'll help with the negative effects. And because you're a Mind Pump listener, if you go to zbiotics.com, that's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash Mind Pump, you'll get 10% off um, any of their products. Now, this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Viore. Viore makes the most comfortable nicest looking athleisure wear you will find anywhere. Of course, you order online. It gets you know sent right to your door. If you're at home right now, like everybody else is, you want to wear comfortable clothing, but you don't want to look like you're just wearing sweats, like you're bumming it. Or you still want to kind of look good. Viore. Go to Viore. Their stuff is amazing, and they have a guarantee with their stuff that I've never seen before. Uh, I think it's a lifetime guarantee. If any of it you know falls apart or something happens, return it. Um, and they'll give you some new stuff. It's very high quality, great, again, at leisure wear. Comfortable, you can work out in it, you could go out in it, relax in it. Uh, Sunday joggers, those are my favorite um, pants that they have. Make sure you check those out. Um, and, you know, of course, uh, we have a discount for you because you're a Mind Pump listener. Just go to vioriclothing.com. That's V U O R I clothing.com forward slash Mind Pump. And then the code on the page that comes up will give you 25% off. Also, all month long, Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, both 50% off. Maps Prime helps you design your warm-up and priming sessions before your workouts. Maps Prime Pro is purely correctional in nature. If you need to work on your hips or you need to work on your shoulders or just general mobility, Maps Prime Pro is the program for you. Here's how you get half off both those programs. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. And use the code PRIME50, that's P-R-I-M-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. I think this episode might be controversial, although this is a message that we've been um, communicating uh, for a long time. But I know it's going to be something that's going to stir up a little bit of controversy. Well, we haven't controversy. De dedicated a full single uh, episode just to this topic, which I think it, I think you're right. I think it, it deserves that. And, it, I think, and I think we need to be clear very clear on the point. Absolutely. Um, it needs to be communicated um, properly um, and very effectively. And the reason why I think this is controversial is because our space, the fitness and health space, um, communicates uh, very well in some ways. And one of the ways that they communicate, I think that they over-communicate, are the, 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 the physical... Um, uh, the physical benefits of uh, eating right and exercising and why that's everything, why that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And I do think they do a poor job 
of not looking at uh, the whole picture. They don't see yeah. what health uh, really, really is. Well, they, there's too many blanket statements that are always made, mm-hmm. and it's it's almost like you know it's predictable to where they're, they're not accounting for nuances and they're not accounting for everyday life that interrupts perfect patterns of of trying to shoot for these like quote unquote healthy habits of of maintaining this perfect kind of health. I, I also think I'm very guilty of. Um, you know, promoting that that message. All early, of us were. early on as a oh, trainer. Yeah. yeah. You know, I really, I really feel like, you know, I approached uh, fitness uh, very science and mathematical based. It was, you know, this is the science that supports when we do these things. This is how the body adapts and changes. Yeah. Here's the math. Tilapia based, plus broccoli yeah, equals abs. Here's the math <laughs> based off of you know your your age your movement and your goals and you know it now it's just a matter of discipline can you can you follow it and the ones that can see the results and are happy and healthy the ones that don't uh have issues they have to work through and they're just not there yet and that really was now i'm saying that in a way that i know that i probably didn't communicate that as a, as a young trainer but i'm sure that i was presenting somewhat that message and so i think it took me a very very long time to uh, kind of see the, the the whole picture and and really start to understand too that who you're communicating to like you know when, when I'm talking to a a, a competitor uh, which is a, a very small percentage of the population um, how I'm talking about health and wellness and fitness is completely different than I am the the general pop mm-hmm. uh, the, the general pop is not looking to get on stage. It's not their sport. It's they have so many other aspects of their life that they value, um, and that's important to them. And as a trainer, I think I was always trying to, you know, uh, make them like me. It's real, real similar, like uh, leading uh, like a, a team with uh, in business. Like the mistake I made early on in leadership was the same, was very similar. I was always trying to make my staff like me. You know, these are the things that made me successful. Therefore, let me see if I can make them all be like me. And it's it's this never ending vicious cycle when you do that of turnover on people because you're just never going to find people that are exactly the same as you versus learning to to work within uh, their parameters and and make them better. It is very much the Western medicine um, and and scientific approach to break. Uh, complex systems up into segments and then to dive deep into those segments. And that's actually a strength of the the scientific approach and and the Western medicine approach. If you want to know deep knowledge about a, you know, the hormone system, for example, or the heart, um, you are going to get some details um, when you go through this, through that approach. But the weakness of it is forgetting that health is a complex interconnected sphere. This is where you tend to forget. So if you go to one doctor and you have digestive issues, that doctor is going to look at them, look at your digestive issues just through their lens and really maybe not consider other things. Like if I go to a hormone specialist, they may think, well, let's test your hormones to see what's going on. If I go to a uh, psychologist, they may think your stress and your relationships are causing your gut issues. If I go to a, you know, a gastro specialist, they may look at uh, you know, how is your gut inflammation? Maybe your microbiome is off or whatever. Uh, if I go to a nutritionist, they're going to look at my diet and think maybe the things I'm eating. And so uh, they, we tend to forget that it's this really big interconnected uh, sphere. That's what health is. And this really hit home for me uh, years ago when I started to really pay attention to studies that were show, that were done on longevity. Mm. And they would show things like, Okay, eating healthy and exercise definitely contributes to longevity. That was nothing shocking there. I knew that already. I would preach that all day long. Yeah. Um, but then I would see things like um, uh, relationships, having good relationships. Community. Yeah, community. Um, people who have a spiritual practice. Did you know that people who have some type of a spiritual practice, whether it be religion or meditation or philosophy, tend to live longer and be healthier, even when they control everything else? Like, that's weird. Like, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. Right? So. All these things contribute to your health. And, and one study in particular, um, you know, really hit this home for me. It showed that having bad relationships was as bad as smoking uh, cigarettes regularly. It actually showed that. It actually showed if you had bad relationships, uh, stressful relationships with the people around you, it's just as bad for you as, as smoking a bunch of cigarettes or 
um, having a really, really poor diet. Now, the reason why that hit home for me was it made me think back to my early days of working out um, and to a lot of clients that I trained who became so obsessed with exercise that they they literally uh, discarded relationships or treated relationships poorly because they were so obsessed with eating perfectly and exercising. So it's like, I can't go to that birthday. That's uh, that's leg day. Or I no, I'm not going to go out with my friends because uh, I never have a glass of wine. And that's what you're going to enjoy, a little bit of wine. Nope, can't go off my diet. Not yeah. going to do it. And it feels, you know, uh, self-righteous, I think, if you're stuck in that, if you're in that space. But when you actually look at the, the data, um, all, so, so many things – uh, are contribute to your health. And it's not just the stuff that I think is obvious. And that's why I think this episode uh, needs to happen, especially right now, especially right now when uh, I, I think I could say this uh, confidently, collectively, you're pr we're probably experiencing more stress and anxiety and uncertainty now than we were seven months ago or a year ago. I think I can say that pretty oh, safely. Easily. Yeah, I think people are more worried. People who maybe even haven't lost, maybe maybe you still have a job and everything's still financially secure. Maybe you're not even worried about, you know, getting sick and, and, the, and COVID or all that stuff. But your whole routine is different. Like you, instead of waking up, getting dressed, get in the car, drop the kids off, whatever, you wake, you, you, you go downstairs in your pajamas, kids are doing whatever, Okay, my structure's all gone. I have no schedule. It's just it's Everything's all stress. Uprooted. Yeah, it's all it's all. So right now, I think this is a message that needs to be communicated because uh, I think it's a very important one. For so sure. so the question is when when in when is eating junk food and being lazy actually healthy? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, that's a it's a great question. Yeah, that's a very very good question. I think we should uh, we should dive into that. I think it's important to break down health into some of the known categories first, right? Like um, there's physical health, which I think that's the one that uh, it's easy to explain, right? That's your muscle, your function. Can you move well? Do you have good stamina and strength? Um, is your body fat percentage appropriate? Uh, in other words, do you have healthy body fat percentage levels? There's a range there, by the way. It's not shredded mm. and it's not super overweight, somewhere in the middle. Uh, your hormones, your brain health. There's the physical, the the vessel that you that you're walking around in your body. Um, there's Are you that an kind able of body. Are yes. you able to yeah do activities? Are you strong? You know, did, all these things like matter in terms of health. Yes. Then there's mental health. Um, mental health would be like uh, how you think about things. Can you think clearly? Um, uh, you know, are you able to be calm and focused? Um, are you free from mental, you know, OCD or disorders or anxiety, or anxi things like that, right? That's the mental side of health. Then there's a spiritual health. Uh, spiritual health is like, do you feel gratitude? You know, you could have great physical health, great mental health, but just feel flat, feel like life has no meaning, feel like there's no, you don't feel grateful for things. And spiritual practices really help a lot with that, right? Uh, yeah. Can you let go of what you can't control? You know, Justin, uh, you say that you said this before. Can you think outside of yourself? Mm -hmm. That's your spiritual health. Yeah, uh, I, I, I get reminded of when we had Dr. Roy von Tog Togma. I think he had, yeah, he pronounced his name, but like the belief system, having a belief system uh, in place, uh, can really drive your health in a positive direction. And, and you know, I think people like discount the fact that you know, like believing in something, like it, it really does change you physically and like physiologically uh, can do can do great things for you. Totally. Uh, relationship health. This one Adam loves to talk about all the time. This is extremely important. Very social creatures. Um, do you, are you able to communicate honestly with the people that are close to you? Do you feel like you can, uh, depend on them? Um, do they, can they depend on you? Do you feel validated and supported? Now, uh, you know, I just named four. I mean, if we want to, we could really break down and go crazy with all, but those are the big four, right? Does physical health, uh, contribute to or influence uh, relationship health? Let's just pick those two for they example. They all do. They yeah. all bleed into each other. All of them, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. let's say your physical health is so poor that you can't get out of the house, or you're so unhealthy that you feel inflamed and irritable and angry all the time. Is that going to affect your relationships? You know, I know this when mm -hmm. I would get people who are super obese as clients, help them lose weight, improve their physical health. Their relationship health would improve because of it. What about uh, if you have poor spiritual health? Will that affect your physical health? 
You know, if you if you don't feel gratitude, if you feel like life doesn't have any meaning, are you going to be want to be as active? Are you going to want to, you know, eat in ways that take care of yourself if you feel like there's no meaning to life? What about your mental health? Mm. If your mental health is down, I, I think everything else is going to be suffering as well. So they all contribute to each other. And the things that you do, even exercise and eating, can feed each one of those things. And you got to know which one needs more help. Both negatively and positively. Correct. I think, and, I, and what, what you'll find is I think there'll be like this, there's going to be a theme like in this conversation. And I really feel like, moderation is is the is the key driver in all of this because each one of the things that you just listed there's a spectrum and there's extreme versions on both sides and i think extreme on both sides is unhealthy totally no matter which one of those that you're talking about and so the real key is to to learn how to have moderation through all of them and to be mindful right and then also not to abuse like so i think that's the other thing to understand too that even a good thing can be abused, and I think that's what I think that's the thing that I, that's probably been weighing on on you, Sal, because you've brought this up several times this last week. That we're seeing right now in in the fitness space, like we see a lot of fitness people that are scrambling what to do, and and understood, right? The, their businesses are upended right now, or they lost their job working at the gym, and they're they're scrambling to find answers or ways to to monetize and make money, and you know they're getting they're pushing this this message and. What I think is important to understand is that it's uh, that's them worrying about their own personal. When you're thinking about who you're communicating to, uh, the masses, uh, you know, trying to push people in a in a direction of uh, you know working out, training hard, staying on that when their mental health is completely out of whack right now because of what's going on in our world, uh, you may not be helping. <laughs> you mm -hmm. think you may be by presenting that message. But in reality, that that person doesn't necessarily need that. And really what they need from a fitness professional right now is to help them figure out these kind of four categories that you broke down and where they need to put the most energy. Totally. If Look, as a trainer, when I would get the type A, you know, and I mean real type A. Everybody likes to say they're type A. I'm type A because I like to work hard. It's not, it's not a badge of honor, by the way. It's a dysfunction. <laughs> but let's say... <laughs> Let's say you're, you're the true type A classic, uh, overdoes everything, hyper perfectionist, works like crazy, um, you know, full steam ahead at everything that they do, right? So I get that person that hires me and they're like, okay, you know, what are your goals? I want to burn body fat and I want to build muscle. Okay, so how long? You, oh, I, I've been doing, I did, I, I do five days a week of Orange Theory. I run twice a week. I've done, uh, you know, I did the HCG diet a couple yeah. times. I, I cut my calories down to a thousand. Like, I, and I'm, as I'm talking to this person, I'm I realizing power yoga. Yeah, I realize that this person is a classic, you know, type A uh, type personality. The way I'm going to communicate them is going to be very, very different from the person who, you know, they come in, they're overweight, and I've never worked out before. I'm a little afraid. I don't know if I want to do it. I don't have the time. It's not fun for me. Very, very different approach. The type A person, the way I'm going to coach them is to be okay missing a few days of working out. In fact, that's what you need. You need mm. to kind of take some time off. And you know what we need to do? Slower, easier type workouts. And you know it's probably a good idea for you? Uh, sit on the couch sometimes and just watch something and just relax. Or how about you read a book, maybe a fiction. Like stop reading so much nonfiction. Maybe read some a book of fiction. See how that how totally different way of of communicating. And both of them are going to improve their health by following the tailored advice. Yeah, going back to kind of Adam's example of the spectrum and having both extremes, I think it's really important. I think people don't give any attention to where they can assess where they actually like are on that spectrum. Like where where would you fall in that spectrum in terms of, you know, your workouts, in terms of your nutrition, in terms of like your relationships, like in, in terms of like your spiritual practices or, or like your belief system? Do you even have one? Like all these types of things. Where are you on that? Are like zero or a hundred? Like I'm all in. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then like figuring out too how uh, th this is where it is. It is important to then understand how to optimize and adapt and, and, and when to do what and where to come back to homeostasis. So this th th this finding like a, a, like a balance, which I know is it's kind of like a term out there that just like turns on a deaf ear, like finding balance. Yeah, what does that mean? What does that even mean? Like <laughs> moderation, like this. So like being able to kind of figure out like where I could tilt the scale uh, to create that sort of home base and then I can I can stretch myself and I can come back and I can always find that again uh, to remain healthy this reminds me of the 
the conversations that I used to have with my competitors. Like if I was uh, coaching a bikini or a bodybuilder or a men's physique competitor, um, one of my favorite things uh, to do during their uh, routine when I was uh, going through it with them is to uh, intermittently introduce fasting days. Um, and it would always strike this up a conversation of why, mm -hmm. like, I don't understand coach. Like, why are we doing this? Like there's nothing to support really having a, a competitor getting ready for a show to just not eat food entirely for a day like that. They're so it's, afraid of losing yeah. muscle. Right, and exactly. Their primary goal is to build muscle and that's why they're doing it. But one of the things that I would always try and remind them that this is, this isn't just about macros and calories and in and calories out. There's an other side to this beast and your mental state and your relationship and connection to food is extremely important to me. And one of my best ways to train that or teach that would be to just totally throw a curveball in the middle of their coaching routine and be like, tomorrow you're fasting. And they would freak out. And then it would then give me the opportunity to speak to that. Listen, this isn't just about me helping you get to a certain point on stage. It's also about helping you for the rest of your life. And one of the things that we don't ever want to be is become a slave to this. I've got to have this many. I got to do this. I've got mm -hmm. to do that. And I'd have to show them that like this is not going to kill your kill your gains in one day. In fact, it'll give you a great opportunity to work inward and focus on other aspects of your health and fitness. And so I loved doing that, mainly, too, because I knew not a lot of coaches were doing that. I didn't know anybody in the space at that time mm -hmm. that was kind of disrupting in that way where they were showing competitors to, to fast. Because I understand that there's nothing supports me scientifically for, you know, this is going to add muscle. Because that's your main goal. If you're getting on stage and presenting your physique, it's all about either building muscle or holding on to the most amount of muscle when you lose the most amount of fat. Mm -hmm. And fasting just doesn't really speak to that. But what I understand is that the relationship with food, the mental health, the spiritual, all the other aspects that you're talking about right now, how much that plays a role, their overall stress, their overall hormones, and everything else that goes into presenting the best version of themselves on stage. And I know teaching that during that phase is so crucial. So, so I love such that. A, I'm so glad you used that example. Fasting is actually a beautiful example of, of, uh, of what we're talking about. If you had a client that came to you that um, didn't like to eat, maybe has a history of anorexia, Fasting's the worst yeah, thing. Right, bad idea. You don't tell them to not eat. That would be absolutely catastrophic. Uh, fasting to lose weight in general is a terrible way to use fasting. Now, fasting is a spiritual practice. Exceptional. It's just a way to detach from something that you think you need to have every single day. In fact, it's present in every, almost every single major religion in some way. You know, the, the major religions for sure, because it's a way to practice uh, detachment. You know, it's a tool like anything else. Like if I put, if there's a hammer on the table and I said to you, is that hammer good, good or bad? Well, neither. It's just a hammer. If I hit, take it and I hit you over the head with it as hard as I can, it's bad. Now it's bad. If I take that same hammer and I, I build a house for you or fix something for you, now it's good. It's all in how it's being wielded and everything can be abused. Anything and everything can be abused. Can junk food being lazy and alcohol be abused? Yes, of course. That's easy. Everybody knows that. Those things are abused quite often. Can eating super clean, exercising super consistently, being hyper, hyper focused on being perfect with everything be abused? Yes, mm -hmm. all the time. Um, I see this all the time in the fitness space. It's not as common, uh, but it's, it's not as uncommon as people would think. And so this conversation, I think, needs to be had on how things are can be healthy and how they can't, how they can be unhealthy. And I think it all boils down to how it's being used. Well, look at alcohol. Here's a great example. Alcohol. You know, a lot of people in the fitness space will say alcohol has zero value. Okay, for a from a physiological, maybe physical standpoint, they're probably right. I can't think of any muscle building, fat burning, physical health promoting you know, benefits of alcohol. Mm. Um, but uh, what if alcohol is a part of your spiritual practice? What if you're a Catholic and you, you, you know, Sunday yeah. you go do church. What and if it's the only way wine? you get laid with yeah. your wife? <laughs> <laughs> it's very important. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, along those lines, what if you, every, you know, once a week you like to sit down with your wife, put the your kids go to bed, you and your wife like to split a bottle of alcohol. So it's not like you're getting destroyed or smashed and, 
you know, you each have a couple glasses and you both enjoy it and it relaxes you both, calms mm-hmm. you down, opens up conversation, you communicate. Now you're helping your relationship health, uh, maybe a little bit of your mental and spiritual health. And are those things going to benefit your physical health? Yeah, they are. Now, now it's okay. Look, uh, you know, back to alcohol, there's millions and millions and millions of Americans drink alcohol, uh, you know, it, it, you know, on a weekly basis, very, very small percentage of them become alcoholics. Uh, there definitely is an abuse pattern. And so we're not promoting that at all, but you know, something like junk food, for example, let's talk about that for a second. How the hell can junk food even be considered healthy ever? Well, it usually isn't, you know, most of the time when you, when people eat junk food, it's, it's not good for them. But, you know, I'll give you an example of when junk food was was healthy. We're all on lockdown. I got my kids. I hadn't seen my kids for almost three weeks because I had gotten sick and I wanted to be over. I had all the scary symptoms. I had the, the dry cough, the fever, the whole deal. Jessica had it too. And, you know, I have my, my kids half the time live with me, half the time live with their mom. They were supposed to come to my house. I, I was sick. So I said, no, don't let them come over here. And then I waited an additional two weeks after that just to be perfectly safe. So. I didn't physically see my kids for almost three weeks. Very, very difficult thing. So when they came, you know, uh, I one of the days I said, hey, do you guys want to bake cookies from scratch? You know, my daughter, of course, freaks out. She gets super excited because it's a treat. It's not like we eat cookies all the time. Mm-hmm. My son, you know, he's, he's 14. Nothing gets him excited. So he's like, whatever. Yeah, so he, <laughs> yeah cool idea. Yeah, dude. He's, yeah. he's always at like a level four. <laughs> I don't care what happens. He's always like, whatever. So Teenagers. We, so we did. We all, you know, make mixed the cookies, made them together, joked around, played music, waited for them to bake. They came out and then all of us, you know, rented a movie together and we all ate cookies together. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, it's high in sugar. I didn't get like, you know, they're just cookies. So they're high in sugar. They're, you know, it's got chocolate chips in them. Uh, probably I didn't count the macros. I wasn't looking at the calories. I'm sure I, I went over my calories for the day uh, just from the cookies alone. Um, but the the health, it made me healthier that day. I felt it. I felt it in in my relationship with my kids. I felt it in my soul, in my mind, and those things also uh, contribute to physical health. Well, you have to understand the the potential cascading effects that something like that has, and and what that reminds me of was uh, a hack that um, you know I kind of fell into. I don't know. It was probably almost four years now in the podcast. So if you've been listening for a long time, you know I've shared it, and it was a, a relationship hack for. Katrina and I, um, you know, both her and I, you talk about type A people. I think we're, we're, we're both like this and go, go, go. And, you know, if there's an Achilles heel in our relationship, very easily can we both get uh, tunnel vision in our goals or what we're doing at work. And one of uh, the greatest hacks I ever found was, you know, let's, let's organize a time where we're sitting down and listening to a book together for an hour. Now, it wasn't the actual book that we were reading that did so so much great work in our relationship. Just like it's not the actual cookies that are that are sure. the healthy part of this or that's okay about it. It's the process in which you you gather with your family or the process in which I sit down with Katrina and we were just we're no longer thinking about all the things in the rest of our day to distract us. We're focused on baking cookies or focused on this book that we're listening to, and then it's what happens from that and what that promotes. It would Mm -hmm. promote this incredible dialogue and deep conversation where her and I would connect on another level. Now, that's an easy example for the average person because it's reading doesn't sound like a negative thing or a bad thing. It's like, oh, reading more is good for everybody. Sure. But if baking cookies in the kitchen promotes something like that with your family, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's just it's weird for somebody in the health and fitness space to talk about that because it's cookies. Well, because it gets extra calories well, and fat and can't be good for you. Yeah, we we went through the same thing. Just being on lockdown and then um, th- just the the overall tension of the household. Like we all feel it, we all experience, and it's. I mean, you just find yourself getting short, you know, and 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 things like that normally would would just roll off irritate you a little bit more because we're we're confined. Everybody's feeling that that same stress. And we're all kind of on top of each other. You know, there, there's still things to do. There, there's there's school. There's virtual things. You know, there's, um, you, you know, the dogs. Everybody else is, like, kind of reacting. And, and, and so to have, like, 
uh, something like a treat or like a, say, for us, it was like a pizza night, you know, and like we kind of we're all looking forward to the end of the night where we're going to get this pizza. And like the whole household's mood was elevated. Mm. We're elevated. We're cool. We're talking. So, again, it's it's. You know, th- this isn't a, a repeatable pattern of like, okay, well, this is the the answer for uh, every time we all get stressed, or you know, th- there's other outlets. Great but th- point. But this is this is something that is in like, it's a treat. A treat is is something that you can look forward to, enjoy, partake in it, and it's not something that like I'm I'm like this is a new button where I'm always hitting this button. It's something that I occasionally do. Very good because. Can you use uh, things like junk food and, and and maybe leisure as a as a way to distract yourself? Yeah, is that healthy? Sometimes it is. Usually it's not. Usually it's not. Sometimes it is. You know, if you're if you're that perfect parent, you know, and you're doing everything right now, and you're just oh my gosh, I'm I got so much on my shoulders right now. I'm so like I got I'm homeschooling my kids. I got to worry about my job. I, I'm trying to create some structure at home and. I'm a little worried and it takes three hours to go to the grocery store because of the lines and this, all the weird stuff. And then, you know, at the end of the day, you put the kids to bed and you're like, uh, I just, I just need a break. I just need a 15 minute break. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to eat a cupcake and yeah. just chill for a second. Fine. Is that healthy? It can be. Now, is that like Justin said, if that's your, you know, like if that's your button that you push all the time, every time you're stressed, you reach for a cupcake to medicate yourself. Well, that's abuse. Mm-hmm. That's different. But if you do it in the right way with the right mindfulness around it, now it can become a very healthy thing. You know, it's uh it's it was it's funny to me when you look at like lifespans around the world and you look at countries that have longer lifespan lifespans than others. You know, countries like Italy, uh, you know, they live longer typically than than people do in America. And there's lots of, you know, well, it's because of this. No, here's the deal. Italians love to eat. They also love to smoke, and they love drinking. They smoke way more than we do. Smoking is one of the worst things you could do for your physical health. It's really generally a totally unhealthy thing. But how the hell do they outlive us? Go to Italy and see how they are with each other. Mm-hmm. Well, look at the relationships that they foster with each other. They place a lot of value on relationships, on community, and on connecting with other people. Um, and I believe that to be the reason why people in Italy – outlive us. And the studies on the world's blue zones actually show that. One of the things, when they study, so blue zones are areas in the world where a disproportionate, in comparison to the rest of the world, disproportionate amount of people live to 100. Okay. And there's like the the island of Sardinia, uh, which is a part of Italy is one of them. There's Okinawa is one. There's an island off of Greece. There's uh, the the Loma Linda, California, the Seventh-day Adventist, the uh, they they live a long time. There's, there's other areas. There's a bunch of them, right? And they study them, and then what they try to do is find commonalities. They thought, and what they thought was they would find like silver bullets. They thought that they would examine these cultures and be like, right. oh, there it is. Everybody eats yeah, so much vitamin D or you know omega threes over here. Y- yeah. yeah, everybody eats a you know vegan diet. Everybody eats a you know pescatarian or everybody. And and they didn't see that. They saw some stuff that was common, but it wasn't no silver bullet. But there was one. Silver bullet. Um, they all had uh, good, close, uh, you know, and they rated highly their relationships, the people around them. Every single one of them, mm-hmm. all of them had them. The Seventh Day Adventists was part of their part of their church. Okinawa, you know, and Sardinia, and in, in the island off of Greece, it was these the people who were old were very connected to their their really their, tight communities. Their great grandkids, and they all had purpose and meaning. All of that. That was one of the most common things that had these people live the longest and had nothing to do with diet uh, and exercise. Listen, be moderate in order to taste the joys of life in abundance. Oh, who said that? Some stoics way smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that's pro- <laughs> profound, Adam. No, <laughs> hey, mine. Yeah, hey, mine. Epi- but, it, but it's fucking brilliant. Epicurus. It's, is that who said it? Yeah, I just remembered. It's, that's, <laughs> it's, that's, it's brilliant. And I think the thing that you have to understand is that and I'm very careful when I talk about this type of a message to my clients because as a fitness professional, it's important too that you don't just give them the green light of, oh, right. you know, Sal, Justin, and Adam on my pump <laughs> <Yes>. said <laughs> baking well, cakes. Ba- yeah, baking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Baking cakes and eating cookies and drinking alcohol, it can be healthy. And so they, they sort of, you, you have to be very, very mindful and understand totally. where the line 
of 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 a, abuse and detachment comes from, totally. right? And I think that you have to be careful of that because using it as a tool to have fun with your family and connect together and in, and in, enjoy, as Sal says, the hedonistic values of food together at that moment, totally awesome. But there's a difference between you having a couple of those cookies and enjoying that that whole, and obviously part of the process of baking and communicating is also enjoying the actual thing that you made. Mm-hmm. So understanding the value of enjoying that and then overindulging. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing that goes for alcohol. Like totally. there, there's a time and place like, you know, if you, if you've been stressed out because of what's going on with the coronavirus all day, you don't know what's going on with your job currently right now. You're, you know, the kids are at home all day long and the, it's, the house is finally quiet and you and your partner together. And you're like, man, let's watch our favorite. Let's be lazy. Watch our favorite Netflix series and have a glass or two of wine together like that. Totally understandable drinking three bottles of wine at that same time, <laughs> different story. Or yeah. or even more importantly, because if even if you did that one time, not a big deal, running that back night after night after night, Correct. Mm-hmm. Now, now it has control of you and you don't have control of it. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason why we avoid talking about things like this so much or we typically throw it in the category of bad is because it's easier for it to become addictive. It's easier for you to abuse it because it feels good. It tastes good. And so there's that fine line at when as a fitness professional, when I'm, I'm presenting this message of, you know, I have to really know who I'm talking to uh, to make sure I communicate this correctly. It, it's also, it's also the, the context of the time. Okay. The reality is for the most part, you know, when we're running this podcast, life is normal. Uh, we're talking to people and, and they're, they're on their way to work and they have normal life and it's all, you know, everything's going right now, right now, excuse me, is a little bit uh, different. It's, it's, it's not a normal time. It's mm-hmm. weird. This is the weirdest time I've ever experienced in my entire life. Right. So right now, here's what I'm seeing a lot of. I'm seeing a lot of people who are not only stressed about what's going on, but they're stressed about the fact that they're not perfect with their diet. And, oh my God, I think I gained five pounds and, oh my God, uh, and you know, yeah. what, why are you going to add more gasoline to this? Yeah, like what am I doing or whatever? Or I'm getting messages like this from people who are like, "Sal, I need your help." Yesterday, I had I had junk food. Like, I, I, what, what am I going to do? I, and I tell them, "Be you know, it's okay. You had junk food one day. Forgive yourself. Be, forgive yourself. It's okay." And considering the context of what's going on, maybe that's what you needed that day. But here's the reality. Okay, the reality is this: for the most part, I'd say the vast majority of times. Healthy looks like usually most of the time you're eating foods that are physically healthy, whole, whole natural foods. You're not overeating. For the most part, most of the time, you're consistent with your activity and exercise and physical self care. For the most part, you're doing all the classic things that we know that are good for you. Most, vast majority of the time, it's the every once in a while when you do the other stuff, when and, and you have good uh, you know, attitude around it and you're not abusing it, that it can also be healthy. It's when it gets flipped that it becomes a problem. Like it, it, junk food, if that becomes your only way to escape and you do it all the time, it's bad. You're, it's not good. It's not good for you. But if you're a healthy person and like I did the other day when I made cookies with my kids, I no problem. I had no stress. I ate those cookies. I wasn't thinking to myself like, oh my God, I'm going to get fat. I ate so much sugar. What have I done? I gave my kids, my kids had three cookies each. I'm such a bad father. No, 99.9% of the time, we eat very, very, very healthy. That 0.1% of the time, we need to have cookies tonight. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody's stressed out. Everybody's worried. Let's all bake some cookies and have a good time. And let's just forget about what's going on the, right now. The neat thing about that too is, uh, especially when you're talking about with kids, right? Like because that is something that you you don't do consistently the 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 joy that you get from it is much higher yeah. than something that you do all the time now it's valuable Absolutely. right there's no novelty in it yeah. if you if you do it every single night then it's the norm and almost expected and then it's borderline abused or can be abused dude i, I had that experience yeah. with with uh, with cannabis you know there was a period of my, of, of my life where i was there was a lot of crazy stuff going on and you know, I was using cannabis for my gut health and I started using it on a regular basis. And I started noticing that if I used it on a regular basis, all the positive effects I was getting from it, I, I wasn't getting anymore. I was just getting more of the negatives. And so I started to realize it's just, I'm having it too much. I got to cut way back. 
And when I cut way back and utilize it the proper way, then I get some of those benefits uh, that you know you hear about from cannabinoids like CBD, THC, and all that stuff. God, speaking of that, somebody just asked me. I think it was in was it in our forum or one of my questions. What what I thought about like dabbing and stuff, and you know, I said, man, stream. I, yeah, I said that's just that's way beyond me because if I'm being completely honest, and now mind you, there's a very there's always exceptions to the rule. There's somebody who has extreme extreme crippling pain that they're in. Uh, that it takes that level of medication for them to to feel numb or whatever. But uh, at that point, I have to ask myself if I've scaled to that level to where I, I'm using or needing that to feel the positive effects that you're saying is, does this have more control over me than I have over it? That's a good question, I think, generally to ask yourself of all of that. And I, that's what I think on all of these things that we're talking about, everything from relationship to spiritual to mental, talking about junk food, talking about alcohol, is that that's the question you always have to be able to ask yourself is like, do, do I have control of this or does it have control of me? And it's a very, it's a very easy answer if, you know, you mind, you mindlessly ate 10 cookies after you bake them that you you lack the self-control and it has more control over you then but if you enjoyed baking a, a th cookies with your kids and you had a you had it in moderation or it lasted over the next week and you had a cookie or two every other day like, not a big deal you have to but you've got to be always doing those checks and balances to make sure that you're falling in that moderation part of the spectrum and not on the extremes. Totally. And, 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 and there are ways, by the way, that you know you can make some of these things uh, less damaging, but just as enjoyable, um, you know, uh, where you can mitigate a lot of the negatives. Like, here's an example, okay? We're talking about you know, junk food or whatever. Um, let's say right now you're like, look, I want to give myself a little bit more leeway to have junk food, uh, you know, here and there, okay, just because of what's going on right now, I'm not feeling good. Plus, it's processed. I could buy. I don't want to go to the grocery store every day, and processed food just lasts a long time. So I'm gonna buy more processed food than I normally do. Well, here's a couple ways you can mitigate some of the negatives. There's healthier junk food. There's processed food that's not as bad as other processed food. You know, rather than buying, you know, if I'm gonna buy like gummy snacks, rather than buying the one that's you know made out of wax and chemicals and crazy shit. Maybe I'll buy the more natural one um, that's got you know maybe less calories and comes in smaller packs. This one I learned from Adam. This was Adam's you know competing strategy where he would put his snacks or treats or whatever in small bags portioned out. That way he knew if he wanted to eat you know some uh, you know honey roasted peanuts rather than grabbing the whole jar, it was a baggie with one ounce. You know, that's like a way to mitigate. Uh, I, I, I love hacks like that, and I love that. I just posted on my story uh, yesterday uh, the recipe for my peanut butter balls. Those taste better than any damn cookie mm -hmm. I've ever had, and it's a, you know, quote-unquote- You need to brand that. It's a quote-unquote healthy- Adam's he peanut butter balls <laughs> in your mouth. Did I just say that? Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't say Adam's peanut butter I said well, my, I pe think my peanut butter balls. I think yeah. you should. Adam, this is brown taste balls. My, yeah. Taste my peanut butter Adam's balls. Adam's brown nutty But balls. I mean, really, all it's, uh, it's peanut butter, honey, and uh, whey protein. And, what do you do? Just and, mix it and, and oats. Yeah. yeah. And you, you just mix it in a bowl and you make balls out of it and you put it in the refrigerator. Oh. And it's amazing. And it's got. Uh, oh, I had, I've had these yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. I've brought them to you. They guys. are yeah, amazing. They, yeah, the, the, it. <laughs> it's just, enough. Yeah, I'm yes, sorry. Yes. I only had that's, two. That was my last one. I only had two. Yeah. yeah that was my I, last one. <laughs> but, I mean, and again, it's something that uh, uh, Katrina and I can make. It's, it's a treat. Uh, it's something that at least when I'm getting it, I'm getting a, a, a moderation of protein in there, healthier fats, even the source of sugars coming from honey. Like it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a better treat to have. So, I, and yeah. that's part of that mindfulness. It's, it's, it's just knowing that I, I just as easily could have grabbed a, a box of chips, Ahoy at the grocery store. Exactly. Yeah. But it's, but here's the thing. What I know is both those treats will feed my soul or feed my, feed that other side of me the same way, yeah. right? It breaks up the weighing and measuring food and all that crap and like worrying about that so much. I get to enjoy the hedonistic values yeah. without it being so 
crappy like Plus chips. It, it quells like somewhat of the, the 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 tendency to then you know binge you know and go like completely off the, mm-hmm. the rails like you know like it being a little more flexible and in, in introducing things that like might be you know a, a considered a treat but maybe a little bit more healthier version of the treat uh, you know may help to kind of suppress that urge to just well, go yeah, crazy i think of things like the um and this is where we've talked about this and we have i think a a, a split down the middle in our forum that's we've we've shared like the halo ice creams and you know those those things are an example of the that point you're making of you know this is i love ice cream i've been talked mm-hmm. about that many a times and what's neat uh if you were to eat that whole thing uh, a halo ice cream they range from 280 to like i think the highest one is i think 360 maybe 400 calories in comparison to a ben and jerry's which is 1700 yeah mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So there's a there's a dramatic difference. That's there, what I mean. Right? You could pick, you know, beef jerky is a good example. Nuts are a good example. Dried fruit uh, that's not uh, that they don't add tons of sugar to, mm. and then portion it out, portion it out, and you know, be be you know realistic with yourself. Put them up in little baggies, and then when you're want to grab something to snack on, or it's a better choice. It's just a better choice than a full box of cookies or a whole bag of potato chips. And look, again, not demonizing one or the other, but just giving you strategies to kind of balance it, uh, you know, out a little bit. You know, alcohol, here's a good one. Um, Here's how you can mitigate alcohol. First off, don't drink right before you go to bed because now you've added not only the fact that you drank alcohol, which isn't physically good for you, but you've now added the, to, to, that you're going to have shitty sleep on top of it. Well, also, I mean, I mean, this is my own personal hack. It's not like that uh, profound or anything. But I I just started drinking whiskey, you know, in, in by itself. Like, not no no added anything else. Like, you're just sipping on it. And so, therefore, it's like you're not going to just run through like you would, making it all nice and easy to, to, to just, like, wash back like with so just Coke. Drink, what you're telling people is drink straight. <laughs> go straight, go hard, <laughs> and sip it slow. Okay, well, I'm going to tell people if you're going to do that, you better have something like Z-Biotic before to make sure that you don't get uh, there fucked you go. up. Yeah. You get, well, so, so what I do with Z- <laughs> so Z-Biotics, for the, for the listeners who don't know, Z-Biotics is a, it's a probiotic. We just started working with them. It's actually an ingenious uh, invention, but it's a, a genetically modified probiotic that actually the, the bacteria consume some of the byproducts of alcohol. So, and, and the byproducts that cause the shitty bad gut, you know, inflamed inflame feeling. Some people would say it contributes to the hangover. So you could drink this before and then have alcohol. I, I'm not, I, I'll take the Z-Biotics. I'm just having one glass of wine. I'm not even drinking, you know, tons of alcohol. Just one glass of wine. And what I notice is I just feel a lot better anyway. And I do it during the day. I don't like fucking up my sleep. You know, mm-hmm. drinking at night, that was a game changer. For, your sleep. Oh, I, I remember learning that as a, as a young adult, you know, where when you're young, you go out with your buddies, it's at night. Then the next day you feel crappy. And then I remember one time, you know, it was like a Saturday and I, I went, you know, down. I don't remember where it was. It was like some festival or whatever. And I was kind of drinking during the day and then allowed myself to sober up a little, went to bed, woke up the next day. I was like, wow, I feel so much better. Like, oh, I know why I slept, mm-hmm. you know? So these are just some strategies. Here's a, here's a way to mitigate the negative effects of being inactive or lazy or unproductive. Schedule it. This it sounds funny, but this is true. Schedule it. Put it in your schedule tonight at you know 7 p.m. from 7 to 9, I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to sit on the couch and do whatever I want. Or hmm. I'm about to surf social media. What time is it right now? 4.30? Okay, I'm going to give myself 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Schedule it. These are just strategies it's you like can recess. use. like recess. That's it. It's just strategies you can use to, to help prevent yourself from turning – things that can become that you can start to develop a, a, a poor relationship with and help kind of manage that. That's all. I also have one that's kind of like, uh, I think counter common knowledge. And that is like when, when I'm going to, if I know I'm going to have a glass of wine, or if I know I'm going to have one of these treats, I'm actually, uh, the, the, the common knowledge thing would be to have low calories or fast. Therefore, when I have the wine or I have this thing, um, it it doesn't uh, absorb a lot all of my calorie. Uh, so you're at the same calories, right? Numbers. That would be common knowledge. But I actually I actually coach to and and utilize differently because I know that when I don't eat or I'm low calorie, I'm like ravenous and I want to eat. And then I eat something that's hyper palatable. It makes that discipline to only have so many even more challenging because my body wants more calories and this thing is really mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. 
So I prefer to have my good meal or have whatever I have planned. And then afterwards I enjoy the treat of whatever it is because it's easier for me to shut it down mm. because I've already kind of filled myself up on nutritious, good, f- f- good food before I do that. And it is, it's a, it's against kind of common knowledge. You would think that it would be a smarter st- strategy when we're talking about calories in versus calories out to have less food earlier in the day. But behavioral speaking, I find, and, and I think anybody can relate to this before, where you just get busy at work and you're doing things and you normally would have had lunch at noon and you totally skip that. And now it's four or five and you're driving home from work and maybe mm-hmm. nothing's prepared for dinner and you're like starving. You it, shovel it in. And well, not only that, but that's the time that you make that fast food choice. Mm-hmm. So that's that time that you reach for something quick and palatable because and overindulge because you waited till you were really hungry. I utilize when I'm doing something where I'm allowing junk food, alcohol, any of these types of foods into my diet, I actually do the opposite. I, I still say, okay, I really want that treat tonight, but I'm actually going to eat this meal that I need or, or, mm. or I should have first. I have that. And what I realize is then after sometimes one, I'm satisfied and then I'm like, eh, I don't really, I don't really need it tonight or I don't feel like it. Or if I still decide that I feel like it, I don't have a hard time only eating two, you know, versus having that treat while you're also really hungry, that is going to challenge uh, those your your ability to be very mindful of not overindulging. Yeah, I think at the at the end of the day, really that the ultimate message is to understand that your health encompasses a lot more than just the physical side, your fitness, how lean you are, how strong you are, how you can move. It encompasses a lot of different things and they're all interconnected. And be kind to yourself. Take care of yourself. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes that means you have a little bit of junk food. You maybe have a glass of wine or like Ad, like Justin said, you have straight whiskey. Or 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 you sit <laughs> yeah, on the, for all the champions out there. Or you sit on the couch and, and you you know you veg out on TV. Most of the time it means you're eating, you know, what is what are considered classically healthy foods, whole natural foods. You're not overeating, you're active. But at the end of the day, you consider the whole sphere of health. And right now, our weird times and what you may need might be different than what you normally need. And if you may be at war with yourself because you can't do what you were doing before and you think to yourself, why can't I just be as strict and crazy? Because think times are different. And maybe you need to take care of yourself a little bit differently today. And again, at the end of the day, Anything can be abused, uh, so abusing anything is unhealthy. Of course, that includes uh, junk food and being lazy. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides, resources, and books. They're all totally free. You can also find us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam.